Okay, yeah. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, uh, today is our first workshop for the Hack and Roll 2021. Our first workshop will be about like intro to mobile app development. And here we already have Haris, our presenter for today. So yeah, without further ado, I will just like uh, briefly introduce Haris. So Haris is uh, a Google expert develop, uh, developer expert in Flutter. He has been conducting a lot of teaching about Flutter, both on his YouTube uh, channel and also Udemy course. You can read like more details in the slide as well, like the more detailed uh, the, uh, profile about Harris. And Harris is also like the founder of Learn Flutter Code. He teach a lot, he has, so he has already gained a lot of experience teaching people as, uh, about like Flutter. And yeah, I will hand over uh, the talk to Harris. We'll probably in, give like more detailed intro and go on with the workshop content. Yeah, hope you all enjoyed the session. All right, thank you so much, Stephen. Um, let me share my screen. All right. So. Okay, thank you guys for coming down. Uh, not coming down, uh, but thank you for zooming in into this uh, Learn Flutter workshop. Um, hope you guys have a nice, what, what day is today? Monday. Monday blues, right? So I'm going to make your Monday blues, Monday black. I don't know. So let's uh, let's carry on with this Learn Flutter workshop. So thank you, Stephen, for introducing me. Before you before we get started, let's go to this tiny URL that I have uh, already created for you guys. So this is basically the slides that I'm already showing you inside the Zoom call. So at least you have some sort of idea of what you want to, you, you, know, you know, you can like uh, see through the slides if you are interested in Flutter. So without further ado, let's get started. So thank you, uh, Stephen, again to uh, introduce me. So I'm Harris. Uh, I'm a Google developer expert in Flutter. I founded my own company called Learn Flutter Code, which we create easy to understand Flutter content for developers like yourselves. So back then, uh, a year ago or now two years ago, right? I used to be a Flutter developer in a startup called Blood. And they are a feminine tech company. So we were like less than 15 people. And I was uh, a developer in creating their period tracking app. So for females, right, um, you tend to have an idea of when's your period, but sometimes you want to track your period. So there are apps out there. So for the blood uh, company, uh, we have uh, an app that I used to work on. And currently, it has 100,000 downloads, I think, in Android. And then in iOS, I think there's a couple more. Yeah, so uh, we created this uh, period tracking app since it was, uh, I think, Flutter beta. So we have gone through a lot of uh, ups and downs with the Flutter framework. And now Flutter is already very stable. So what is Flutter for many of you guys who just came in, right? What is Flutter? So Flutter is created by Google and it's a UI toolkit for building beautiful natively compiled applications, not only for mobile, but also for web and desktop from a single code base. So you could see that you build once and then it can be sent out to many platforms. I mean, there are many other platforms out there, but Flutter, its main goal is to hopefully conquer every platform. So Flutter uses this programming language called Dart. So I think Dart is not a very common or popular language, but due to Flutter's popularity, it has become the number one fastest growing language back in 2019 during the GitHub uh, Octobers. So GitHub Octobers is like a survey to see how, it's like the analytics on what's the trend for programming languages in GitHub. Oh, I misspelled GitHub. Okay, so I just realized that. All right, so for Flutter, it's now the sixth most popular open source GitHub project. So I think uh, we have uh, beat, I think, React Native and we are very close to, I think, Linux. So uh, I think in the future, it will overtake that. Hopefully this year, I don't know. And there are more than 100,000 apps shipped, uh, 100,000 Flutter apps shipped in the Google Play Store. So um, there is a lot more like Flutter apps. I think there is like a detail inside your Google Play um, landing page where you can see uh, what kind of tech is being used. So I think, I forgot, but there is like, if you see the word Flutter, 
then you know that uh, that Android app, right, is made by Flutter. So some popular apps that you uh, guys... Harry, sorry to disturb. Uh, Harry, uh, are you displaying a different slide? Because I, I, I think we all still only see the first slide. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Oh my god. Uh, mm. Let me stop sharing. Let me share again. Let's stop to... Uh, okay, can you guys see? Ah, yes. Okay. It's, uh, it's yes. the first time yep. now. Yeah. Okay, so sorry. All right. Uh, don't need to go through. Never mind. It's okay. So yeah, so... um. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so um, we have already... For Flutter, we have already gone through... 100,000 apps and I think it's going to grow even more. So uh, popular apps that you guys might have um, know that you might not know that is uh, being built in Flutter. So there are, like, there are like three apps. So it is Google Play Singapore. It's built in Flutter. And then Stadia. So Stadia, it's like an online platform for you to play like very good uh, graphics game. I think the recent one is Cyberpunk. So you can play Cyberpunk in your mobile app or in your desktop or in your um, TV without buying a console or whatnot. So that's, the, that's what Stadia is. Uh, so Stadia is also built in Flutter. And lastly, I think most of you guys have used Grab. But the Grab app, sadly, is not built in Flutter. But if you were to be a merchant or if you were to use Grab as a platform to sell your products, right? The Grab merchant app is also built in Flutter. So these big companies like Google and Grab and even more other companies like Alibaba use Flutter because uh, most of the time the reasons are it's very productive and because having an Android and iOS team in, 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 its, in its each separate entity, it's very time consuming because sometimes the Android team is faster than the iOS team. So you have to play catch up. But with uh, Flutter, it is one code base so that your releases for both uh, Android and iOS or even your web app is actually very sync. So you don't have to wait for each other. Now, so the expectations for this like workshop, right? It's uh, because I assume that a lot of you guys don't know Flutter because I think I talk enough to developers that they don't know Flutter, right? So I'm going to explain a lot more than doing the code because uh, for you guys, you are going to do a hackathon so I think it's better for you guys to understand what you're coding rather than just doing it. Even though hackathon is really just a lot of doing, I've been, I've been through one hackathon before, it's a lot of exploring and such. So hopefully in this um, workshop, you know what it does, what you're coding out so that you can, com uh, you can code out more complicated stuff uh, using Flutter. And yeah, so I, for me, my philosophy is I rather... You guys understand uh, then uh, having the result of, uh, you know, finished the app. All right. So for this workshop, I think if you guys read the details, we are going to build a to-do app. So it's a very simple to-do app. And the only functionality is to create a to-do and also to delete a to-do. To so delete means you click on the done button and then it will just delete the whole uh, to-do. So we're going to build it from scratch. So that means we're going to build from the first line of code. So at least you guys understand how Flutter works, right? Okay, so um, I need you guys to go to this website, dartpad.dev uh, slash Flutter. So this is where we are going to, this is an online um, environment for you to actually use Flutter without you downloading Flutter because downloading Flutter, it takes a long time and then you have Windows and Mac and sometimes people use Linux. So having an online environment will really help uh, in uh, what you call that, uh, learning Flutter because you don't have to waste a lot of time. So go to this website. Uh, I think, um, let me see if uh, in the chat, let me see, yeah. let me copy and paste in the chat as well. Yeah, so go to this website. Okay, so it will look something like this. So uh, by default, it's in dark mode. So there's no chance of you to get in light mode. And if you were to run it, it will actually say hello world. It's a very typical tutorial of a hello world, right? So I have with my, can you guys see? Okay, so let me change my desktop. Okay, can you guys see the dot pad in my screen? Yep, okay. we can see it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, this it will look something like this. So now what? Okay, so now I need you guys to like delete everything, right? 
because we are going to build it from scratch. So let me go to Dartpad. Let me delete it except for the import library over here, right? So oh, can you guys see? So the import over here, we just leave it as such. So let me explain what this first statement means. So it's an import statement for, for those who have not coded much or who, who have not created a mobile or web applications or uh, demo with maybe a little bit of machine learning. So you have this thing called libraries. So libraries are like where you're able to get different types of like uh, stuff that you can use. So to, for example, if you want to uh, grab a button, you probably need to get grab a library. So in Flutter, you have a lot of uh, uh, buttons and like those uh, user interface components. So the import statements, this is how Flutter does it. First of all, you have the word import and this is how the syntax goes. So it's a string. And then uh, you probably either have to put the package uh, name, uh, the word, and then next, uh, you have a colon, and then you see the folder, uh, the folder name. So the folder we have Flutter over here. So we won't use, we won't import a whole folder. We're only going to import one file, which, which is material dot So some of you guys uh, might not know what material means. So I mean, this is the first import statement. Okay, I, I explain, but okay, I will explain material later. Okay, so once you have done the import statement, right, the next thing is we're going to create the void function. So the void function is basically an entry point to a flat or dart app. So for, a, uh, I think this is the, it, it looks very similar to a syntax for any functions, maybe in JavaScript or whatnot. So void is the return type. So you just, uh, so inside your dot pad, you type in void. So void is just a return type that doesn't return anything. So it just, it's just a normal function. And then you will type in the word main, and then you will put in the colon and the curly brackets. So in a dot application, in a Flutter application, you can think of the main uh, function as the starting point of an application, right? So once you have done with the void main function, then the next thing is that you're going to use this run app function. So this run app function can only be found inside the import material library over here. So if you were to type in run app inside the main function, so type in run. And then uh, if you were to press control space, right, it actually opens up. Okay. It actually opens up this um, suggestion menu. So it has the similar functionalities of when you were going to type inside your own IDE. So that's one cool thing about Dartpad itself. So run app over here requires an argument. Okay, so let, and for a function in uh, or any line of code, if you want to end it, you end it with a semicolon as well. So I think at the same time, I'm also trying to teach you Dart as well. Lah. But if you were to have any like JavaScript, Java, or very uh, those kind of languages, then you probably know you have to end with a semicolon, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I've never touched uh, other languages for a very long time. But yeah, so you have one positional argument that you need. So this run app function before, uh, so this run app function basically means you inflate a given widget and attach it to the screen. So you, you, you will need an argument of a widget type, and then you attach it to the screen. So the screen can refer to a mobile app, a web app, or even a desktop app. But what, what do I mean by inflating a given widget? What does a widget mean? So what are widgets? So widgets are basically user interface components such as your buttons, your images, your text, or your text fields. So you could say that widgets are just Google's way to say, oh, these are UI components. So if you have done React before, it's called components, you know. Um, then I think in Angular, it's called modules. I don't know. Yeah, so uh, it's just a fancy way to say, oh, these are user interface components. That's about it. So anything you can see, they are called widgets. So in Flutter, uh, there's a saying, everything is a widget. Technically, that is some sort true. Yeah, but you see how widgets are being built. So inside your run app function, you will need a widget uh, inside it in order for you to run uh, an app, all right? So to create a widget, we need to create a class. So inside Flutter, this is how you normally create a class. 
I forgot the starting curly brackets, my apologies. So I think this is very common in any programming languages. Then after that, oops, sorry. Then after that, you will need to extend this thing called a stateless widget. So extends is just a syntax for inheritance. So for those who don't know what inheritance is, basically, like for example, uh, stateless widget has a property that allows you to build widgets, right? So you need that property inside your own widget. So this is how you create your own widget. So I have like a link if you want to understand more about inheritance. So let's create this uh, class my app extend stateless widget. So if you are following the slides, luckily this slide, you can copy this code and then go to your dot pad and then you can paste this. Excellent. So you, I mean, coders, right? We just copy and paste stuff, right? Yeah. So once you have created your widget, right? Now I'm going to delve a little bit deeper on what stateless widgets are, right? So stateless widgets, uh, there is one word that you might have not heard, which is called state. So in my, uh, in my definition, a state is basically a tempor temporary storage of data. Right, so database, I think, is more of a permanent storage of data, but state in the front end framework is more temporary. So, then what is stateless widget? So, if you know what's a widget, it's a user interface component, right? And for stateless widget, it is a UI component that does not store any data, but rather show it. So, for example, like your image or your text or whatsoever. So, for example, right, you have a counter app. And then the counter app has very simple widgets. You have like a button widget, you have a text widget, and you have the app widget itself. So if you were to click on the button, the only widget that's being changed is uh, the text widget. So it becomes number one. So let's see which are the stateless widgets. So obviously the text widget is a stateless widget. Like I say, the text widget does not store the data that's being changed. Uh, but it only shows the data. Then the button does not also store any data. It just uh, handles the tab. But the one that's storing the state is actually the app widget, which we call it stateful. So this will actually store the number that's being changed. So earlier, the number was zero, right? And then it changed it to one. So the only widget that can store this state is the app widget. So the text widget is just showing the, the data that's being stored and the button is just handling uh, the user interaction. So that's basically the difference between a stateless widget and a stateful widget. A stateless widget does not really store the data while the stateful widget stores the data. So now getting back to creating a widget, we are going to create a stateless widget first. So simple user interface. So for the stateless widget, right, it's an object or class and it requires this build method. So in uh, Flutter, there is a couple of syntax that I have to explain. So the first one you could see here is override. So override here, uh, and this is the syntax to say that we need to override the method that we are trying to uh, do here. So in stateless widget object, there is this build method. So the build method in stateless widget, the, it just returns nothing. So we want to return something, which is a material app. So, uh, or a widget itself. So in Flutter, there is a widget type, which is from the stateless widget. And then uh, the build is the build method name. And then inside the argument, we are presented with this thing called build context. So what's build context? In short, it's just the location of your widget. All right. So that's all you need to know. I won't get complicated because you guys are just still learning about Flutter. And then for this build method, it's going to build our widget, which is called my app. So we, are, we need to actually re return a widget and the first widget that we are going to return is a material app. So this material app or the word material uh, is something that you guys might have heard before, right? So the import library inside our dot pad over here has the word material. So the definition of material is, uh, it's not the scientific material, but uh, before that, okay. So material app basically is a convenient widget 
that wraps the number of widgets that are commonly required for material design applications. So you could think of the material app as the base of creating an app. So like, for example, in, uh, in building a website, you need to like have the different tags, right? You need a head tag, you need a body tag, you need a footer tag, whatever, right? For Material App, it does everything for you. So you don't have to worry about it. So what Material App does is that it will give you the routes, right? So it will give you like, oh, if you need to go to the settings page, it will give you the routes for this and then for that. So it, it's a very nice widget to handle a lot of things as well. So... Then uh, I think you guys had enough, like what is material or what is this material design? So very good question. So material design is actually built by Google and it is a design system that helps teams to build high quality digital experience for Android, iOS, Flutter and the web. So these are like very easy for you to actually build, you know? So you don't have to build anything from scratch. Because for example, if you want to build a button, you probably need to have like, uh, you know, you need to know what's the, you know, what do you call that? The uh, border radius of the button. And then you need to know the shadow and what's the text and what is the size. So material design does it for you. You don't have to code it from scratch. And that's why I think a lot of people like Flutter because everything is already done for you. Like if you want to create a chip, you, it's already created for you. You don't have to code it out. Or if you want, for example, for example, let me let me go up. For example, you want a snack bar that is already created for you, or a app bar and such. So, like developer like us, right? We are not so concerned about the design, right? So sometimes we just need to know what uh we need to just uh, push out the feature and we just need to see how it looks like so if uh, if you guys are like web developers then you could think as material design as like bootstrap right so uh, it is like google's bootstrap so you don't have to code out anything from scratch so it, in order for us to set the apps theme right so like for example in this earlier example the app theme over here there's a very common color that's uh, uh being uh, shown inside this example. So the, the color that is being shown is actually indigo. So we can actually make use of the app theme inside our uh, material app or our Flutter widget over here. So then uh, inside material app, we have this parameter called theme and it requires us a theme data object over here. So this theme data is basically an object that stores all of the different information that you can uh, set for example, the colors of your button, the color of your app bar and whatnot. And then uh, this primary swatch is basically the overall color of everything. So what's the color of your, for example, buttons or what's the color of your app bar and such. So what we can do is we can copy this. So you can click on copy on this, uh, what do you call this slide? Go back to your dart pad. So you can just highlight this whole thing over here and then you can paste this as such. Then at the same time, right, let me zoom in even more so you guys can see. So my app over here, then we can pass this my app. Since it's a, a widget, right, we can pass through inside our run app uh, function over here. So my app is a type. If in Flutter, this is a type. So we need to get the object. So what we can do is we need to get the instance of the object by putting the uh, brackets over here. So then now we are able to run our app. So for now, the app is pretty empty. So we need to add more stuff. So you could think of material app as like the widget that's in the background. So it just control what the color is, what the different routing is. But in terms of user interface, it's really nothing. So what we need to do is then we are going to create a stateful widget. So since we already know how to create a stateless widget, now we're going to create a stateful widget. All right. So to create a stateful widget, it's, it's a little bit more boilerplate. So like I said earlier, like the only widget that can control state is a stateful widget. So if you want to create a stateful widget, it is the same. You, you probably have to create a class and then you have to inherit through to the stateful widget. But now it's a little bit different. Now you need to override it. The, you need to override the method called create state over here. So you need to create a state inside your widget. So you just have to override it. And then you probably have to 
create uh, what you call this this uh, method name. Uh, and if you were to see this underscore, so I think in um, C sharp or Java, if you want to create a public uh, variable or a public um, property, right, you have to type in the word private. But in Flutter, it's uh, much more simpler. If you were to put an underscore, then this whole name over here, this method name is actually private. So you cannot use this uh, name in any other files other than the file itself. So that's a uh, FYI for you guys. So then um, you can see over here, uh, for you guys who don't know, this is a single expression uh, syntax, meaning that if you only have uh, just one thing to return in your method, right? Then you can use this arrow syntax. I think in JavaScript, uh, it's pretty common as well if I'm not wrong. And then we are going to return this my homepage state. So this is actually a boilerplate that you don't have to type from scratch because if you were to do it in your IDE, whether it's in Visual Studio Code or Android Studio, right? Uh, this has been uh, created for you inside the Flutter extension or the Flutter VS Code extension and whatnot. So but uh, for now, um, you can just copy this. And then you could see that uh, there is another class that is called my homepage state over here. And then this extends the state for the my homepage widget. So this is where you're able to control the state. And then now this looks very uh, familiar. You have your build method over here with your build context. So what we can do is we can copy this my homepage, then go back to Dart pad and let's go all the way down and then just paste this as such. So then you already created my homepage, uh, a, a stateful widget. All right, so hopefully I'm not too fast. Um, yeah, feel free to ask any questions because after this, uh, I'll be answering uh, most of your questions about Flutter. Okay, so now inside our my homepage stateful widget, inside our build method, so we are going to return this scaffold widget. So what is this scaffold widget? So material app is just like the back, uh, the back end of the material app. It's not really a back end, but it's like uh, a widget that controls a lot of things. So scaffold is basically the visual layout structure that helps create, like for example, the app bar or even the floating action button. So this is like a simple way for you to code a lot of like things without you coding from scratch, right? So we're gonna use the scaffold widget. And then earlier you could see that we're gonna create an app bar. So the app bar is basically this top yellow uh, bar on top, basically to tell you that what's the name of this app. And then uh, this button on the bottom, right? is called a floating action button. So this is just a material design uh, way to say that uh, users tend to use their right hand thumb to press on the phone. So most of the time people use their right hand thumb to interact with their phone. So they realize that uh, this button is actually very useful. So that's why they call it floating action button. At the same time, it's floating also. And it, it is controlling all of the actions as well. So now you can see that inside our scaffold widget over here, we can pass in an app bar. So we have an app bar parameter, and then it, we can pass in an app bar widget. And inside this app bar widget, we can title it as my to-do using this text widget. I'm going to explain the text widget later on. And then uh, next, we're going to have a floating action button. And this floating action button is a widget itself but that we can pass into a parameter. And then we're going to have an on-pressed uh, parameter. So basically, if the user were to press on it, what are you going to do? So you can run functions in it. So this is an anonymous function, which I'm going to explain later as well. And then inside our floating action button, you can add in an icon. So let's copy this whole thing. And then let's go back over here inside our dot pad. And then we are going to highlight our my home page class over here. And then uh, we're gonna paste this, sorry. We're gonna highlight the my home page state. And then we're going, going to paste this as such. All right, so now we have our, our my home page over here. So if you were to run this, right, do you think anything will happen? Not really, because why is that so? Did I explain this inside my slides? 
No. Okay. So um, I'm going to quickly say that uh, we are only running the material app, even though the console, we have a console inside .pad, right? Uh, it only says script error, which is not exactly uh, helpful towards us. Um, yeah, so I think the Flutter team is still working on better error messages. So the material app is currently running, but it's only running material app. So we need to pass in our my home page. So what we need to do is we need to have the home parameter. So the home parameter over here, does it have the documentation? Great. So in that pad, there is the documentation. So the home over here, right, is the parameter name. It requires a widget type. So the widget for the default route of the app. So basically like in, uh, what do you call that, in a website, this is your default route, right? Which is usually the home. So it's a slash. So in Flutter, we also follow the, the same, uh, what do you call that, convention as well. So we're going to put our home as our my home page widget. So you can copy this my home page and then paste this as such. So as uh, you guys have known, my home uh, page without the brackets is a type. So we're going to create the bracket so that is the instance of the object. And now if we were to run this, right? Finally, you have built your, fl your first Flutter app. So <clears throat> you have your uh, my to do app bar, which is Indigo, and then you will have your floating action button over at the bottom right here. So, one cool thing is that uh, I think I never discussed this is that the colors over here, right, is actually a library for all of the different colors. So, if you were to delete the word Indigo, so I just delete the word Indigo, and then if you were to press control space, right, you could see all of the different colors that you can use. So for primary swatch, right, so this is just uh, FYI for your information, you only can use the basic colors. So that means you cannot use white or black, they are not really basic, and you cannot use accents as well. So you only can use like, the, for example, pink. So if I were to use pink and I were to run this, okay, why am I, why is it? compiling to JavaScript. Okay, so sometimes that pad is a little bit wonky, but yeah, um, uh, it's still work in progress, right? So now you could see that the colors are now pink, right? So this changes both the app bar and the floating action button. So you don't have to worry so much on how you're going to make the theming. So this is really very easy and helpful for you if you want the consistent color and you don't have to worry about the design of the app or how uh, nice or ugly looking the app material design or the material app widget or the theme data helps with that. So we can go back to the word indigo. So, and then we're going to run this as well. All right. So now um, I'm going to explain briefly on the different widgets that I've gone through inside this scaffold widget. So first of all, oh, I never gone through app bar. Okay, never mind. So first of all, the text widget over here. Uh, pretty explanatory. It displays a string of text with a single style. So the text widget will only accept uh, the string data type. So if you were to put an integer or boolean, it will shout an error. Then the next widget is called the icon widget. So material design also have its own icon. So all of these icons are material icons. And the thing is, everything is inside the material library itself. So inside the import statement over here, everything is being uh, imported inside this material.dot file. So you don't have to worry so much on, oh, I need to, for example, a uh, popular icon pack is like a font awesome. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I need to download uh, icon pack. Everything is there for you. So you don't have to worry so much if you really like, uh, want to just push out a minimum viable product or proof of concept and you don't have to worry about the design because you want to just see uh, you want to see the idea come to life in an app form, right? You can do this with just Flutter. I mean, you now can use it, uh, build it to uh, build it into a website as well. So that's why I think a lot of people like Flutter is because it's very productive. If uh, the, if building an app and pushing Features is the main prior priority, which I think a lot of companies are focusing more on, right? So now this is how it looks like uh, overall 
uh, on how you are going to build a stateful widget. So, okay. So, uh, yes, another thing that I want to talk about is this thing called anonymous function. So this, uh, this person is an anonymous and basically an anonymous function is a nameless function. So in other programming languages, uh, it might be called Lambda or Clojure, but for Flutter, we call it anonymous function. Basically it's a function without a name, right? So that's why you could see these uh, brackets and uh, curly brackets. So you, there is no uh, arguments uh, for this on-pressed parameter but you just have to pass in your function in between the curly brackets. All right, so now, um, yeah, so we've already gone through this where we, once we have created our stateful widget, right, and we want to now put it inside our Flutter app, we need to then set our home page or home route into our my home page widget. So now, um, this is like the whole code. So if you have some errors or if you were to miss anything, then you can just copy this whole code. You can copy and then you can just go back to Dartpad and then highlight everything and paste and run this so that you know everything works fine. So this is yellow color, but I like indigo, right? Okay. Now, once we are done with this, my homepage, right? The next thing is now we can finally create our to-do app. So I think in uh, 2020, um, most of us uh, were looking for to be more productive, right? So in 2021, right, our new year resolution, we, are, we need to be more productive in our studies, in our work, uh, you know, in our side hustles or whatnot. So having a to-do app actually really helps. Uh, <laughs> so it's a very common tutorial as well. Okay, and this is how the to-do app looks like. So you will have this thing called a text field, and then you have this, uh, your to-do, and then you have a done button. So if you were to click on the done button, it will just remove this. And then um, at the same time, it's not really very intuitive, uh, meaning that you will have to put in the to-do, and if you want to add it inside your app, you have to click on this floating action button. Yeah, so, Let's look closely. And the first thing that we actually can see is the layout of the different widgets at the top over here. So these uh, widgets over here are actually in a column. So a column is also a widget and it displays its children widget in a vertical array. So vertical means uh, top and bottom, right? From top to bottom, I mean. So this whole column, right? Uh, has a children uh, that takes in a children or a list of widgets. So to do that, we are going to use this body parameter. So for scaffold, we have a body parameter. And then we are going to use the column widget. And then they have the column widget has this children parameter, which take in a list of widgets. So we have a list of widgets, uh, the text fields, and we have this uh, list uh, this um, row of stuff over here. So we are going to just uh, highlight this body column children over here. And then let's go back to dart pad. Then we can scroll all the way down. And in, be in between our app bar and floating action button, we are going to add in the body with our column children widget as well. So we, are, we also need to add in a trailing comma so that um, we don't have any errors. So if you were to run this, um, actually nothing really happens. So the next thing that we need to do is to add in the different widgets inside our column. So the first widget that we're going to add in is the text field. So a text field is basically a widget that lets the user enter the text. So whether you're on your mobile phone or whether you're on on a keyboard, the text field will handle that. So I think that's pretty cool because for Flutter, if you were to build a website and a mobile app, uh, like for example, what's a common mobile app and uh, what do you got? Yeah, if you were to have an app that's both on mobile and web and web desktop, right? Then this text field will handle whether you're on the phone or on the keyboard. So I think that's pretty cool. So we're going to add a text field widget inside our list 
uh, of widgets over here. So you can copy the text field. And then inside our list over here, we're going to paste our text field. So at the same time, if you want to read more about children, you can highlight the children and go to the documentation. And then you could see that this is a list of widgets over here. So this pointy thing represents the type. So we have the list and then we have the type widget over here. Then if you want to create an empty list with a specific type, so this is a little bit of Dart, then you will have to put in the type with the uh, pointy brackets before the uh, list over here. Yeah, so the next thing that we're going to add is, okay, uh, yes, sorry, you will probably have to run this as well. <laughs> So now you have created a text field and then you can type in learn flutter and press enter. Nothing happens actually. So what we want to do is that if we were to type in our first to do, um, then we can click on this add button. Then we will actually uh, add in our to do's as well. But I think right inside our my to do's over here, it looks a little bit ugly. So I think we need some spacing to encamp uh, to wrap around our text field. So yeah, we need some padding. So what we need to do is we are going to actually wrap our column in uh, padding. So I think in uh, web, there is padding as well. Um, so in Flutter, there is also padding. So I guess if you, to, if you were to have any web uh, development experience, I think this is very familiar to you. So padding over here requires, uh, it has a parameter that requires uh, the age inset. So I guess it's just another word for um, padding. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, age insets, and then you will use this um, dot all. So basically you add padding at the top, bottom, left, and right with a space of 18.0 pixels. So you don't have to worry about the different uh, sizes. Uh, in Flutter, it is by pixels, just pixels. Don't have to worry. And then uh, there is this thing called const. So const means constant. So this means that these uh, each insets over here, um, it's, it won't change in the future or never ever. And this is just a little tip for you if you were to build Flutter apps. Uh, if you know that a value will not change in the future, I will recommend you to put the word constant over here. So this, uh, this tells Flutter uh, or the framework that um, this won't get changed and it actually makes uh, your app a little bit faster, but it's very minuscule, but this is just a good habit for you if you want to, you know, be consistent and have less bugs in the future. All right, so what we can do is we can actually copy this whole body over here. So just before the semicolon, we can just copy this whole body, copy. And then inside our body column with our children text field, we're going to paste as such. Hopefully no error. Okay, cool, there's no error. So now we are going to run this. And then you could see that our text field, right? will now have spacing uh, in between top and bottom as well. So now it looks way nicer. So a little tip for design, always add padding. Yeah, because it looks better. And also it makes uh, interaction uh, way easier for people to, you know, put, uh, to interact with your text field as well. All right, so the next thing we are going to put is, uh, we're going to decorate our text field. So this is just one way to decorate our text field. So the most common way you see a text field is just one line and then this cursor over here. But the next thing is that we're going to have this decoration that um, overrides the input decoration. And basically the border is, uh, the default is just a single line border, but we're going to use the outline input border. So what we can do is that we can just copy this whole thing, the text field. And then it will actually make this cool looking uh, rectangular text border so that it, it looks nicer basically. So I'm just, I'm just that kind of person who just likes nice looking stuff, right? So once you do this text field over here with the decoration outline input border, let's run this. Then you will have uh, the rectangular uh, border over here. 
So for Flutter, we also do format our code. So there is this format button. You can just click on the format. And then now your um, different, uh, what do you call this? Uh, lines of code will look nicer, right? So if you don't have a trailing comma, and if you were to format it, right? No formatting change. Okay, sorry. Uh, how do I do this? So if you don't have any trailing comma as such, right? It looks a little bit ugly, but it really depends on you. Okay, Flutter doesn't really care about trading commas. I mean, that pad, that pad. Yep. So now, once we are done with our input decoration, make sure you have trailing commas so that it's it, it actually formats it nicely. So once you are done with input decoration, the next thing is that we are going to create our list of to dos, right? So we're going to create a variable inside our state um, object over here. So make sure you create your to-dos just underneath the build method over here. So that at least you are at least this is uh this is able to be readable. And yeah, I think that's basically it. So for these to-dos, you are going to create a list. But for Flutter, right? Um if you were to just create like this, it will just think that this is a list of dynamic type or in like, I guess TypeScript is like any type. So like it doesn't expect, it, it expects any type of value inside this list, but we don't want that. So we want to have a specific type, which is a string type. So that we know that uh, because uh, for the text field, it only, it converts all of the values into a string. So that's why we are going to use this um, list, of string, uh, list of string type. So we, let's copy this uh, variable. And then right underneath, right underneath our my home page state build method over here, we are going to paste this as such. Now we have our to dos, but it's not being used. So in our earlier, uh, let's add in some um, what do you call this values for our to dos uh, variable. So we're going to just copy this as well. So we're going to learn Flutter. I think that's what we have we are doing right now. And then we're also going to create a to-do app as well. All right, so that's how you add in values. I think it's pretty simple for a list. So now for this uh, widget, uh, we are going to use this widget called list tile. So a list tile widget is basically a single fixed height row that contains some text and as well as a leading or trailing icon. So I mean, that's the material design way or uh, recommendation. But for me, um, if I see a way for me to put stuff at the right hand with a spacing in between, I'll just use it. So I'm going to use a button instead of an icon. So we're going to use this list tile. Okay. So um, if you want to know more about list tile, you could see that there is this blue color. Uh, the, the, the title of this is blue color. It's actually clickable. And this actually redirects you to the list tile documentation in Flutter. So if you want to know more on how it looks like, you can go to this uh, documentation. So I've already uh, done most of the different uh, widgets uh, documentation for you guys. Okay, never mind. I will click later on. Yeah. So for list tile, they have uh, yeah, pretty good documentation on how it looks like because I think that's very, very important. You need to know how a widget looks like and what are the different uh, properties and parameters and uh, configurations you can do with a list tile, right? So you can do like this or you can have a three dots as well and such. So that's, I think, uh, pretty cool. So for our example over here, the list tile only has like two different things. So the first part of a list tile is called leading. So the leading part of the list tile is at the left. Then the trailing part or the right hand side, the right hand part of the list tile is called trailing. So for, oh, okay. Yeah, so to create a list tile, first of all, we also need to go through a for in loop, right? So we are, Going through the for in loop, oh, sorry, we're going to create a for in loop. And in Flutter, this is how you create a for in loop. So let's go back to the Dart pad. Okay, why is it like that? Okay, I need to 
let me do it full screen so that looks better. Okay. So we want to uh, loop through the different to-dos to render the list tile accordingly. So inside our column over here, inside our list, we actually can input a for in loop. So we can type in for, and then inside the for in loop, you'll have a brackets, and then we're going to create a variable that is called to do. And then we have the syntax in, and we need a list to loop through. So the to do's represent the list, and the to do without the s represents the single element that it's looping through. So in Flutter, you can create a for in loop inside a list, which I think really is beneficial, especially in this, uh, in this uh, context. So we're going to add in a list tile. And then this is going to loop through the to-dos and render the amount of list tile according to the length of the to-dos. And then for the list tile, let's control space. There's different parameters. So the first one that we need is this thing called leading. So leading is like we have uh, learned earlier is at the start of the list tile. So for leading over here, if you were to go to the documentation, uh, let me move it up. It is requires a widget and the widget to display before the title. So it's, it's on the left, basically. So we're going to make use of a text widget. And for our to-do, it is actually a single element that is a string value. So what we can do is we can add the text widget. And then in our text widget, we can just pass in a to-do. All right. So now if you were to run this, you could see that our to-dos that we have hard-coded has been rendered inside our My To-Do app. So now the next thing is we are going to create the buttons on the, what is it called? Trailing part of the list tile. So then what widget are we going to use? So, re so there is this widget called uh, Outlined Button. So it's basically a text button with an outlined border. So if you were to look closely, it's just like a, yeah, it's a text button and you can faintly see this uh, border that's surrounding it with uh, spacing in between. So we're going to add in our outlined button. Okay, I never put in, okay, never mind. So for the outline button, what we can do is let's format this so that it looks mm, easier for us to add in our trailing widget. So right underneath our leading parameter, we can type in trailing. And then we are going to type in the word outlined. So it's a past tense and button. So press control space. And then you see the different uh, suggestions. So we're going to use outlined button with the brackets. So for the outline button, you could see some warnings. It requires two things, the child parameter and the on pressed parameter. So for our align button, let's put in the child parameter. And then for our child parameter, it requires, if you were to highlight and go to the documentation, it requires a widget. So it's also another text widget. And then we are going to add in a text with the string done, All right? And then the next thing is we are going to have our on pressed parameter. So control space to get the suggestion when you pre when you type in on pre. So you have the on pressed. And then you will just pass in an anonymous function. And then once you run this, you could see that there is actually the done um, outline button. So if you were to press done, this learn flutter over here will actually just remove itself. So if you were to, if you were lost in any part of the workshop, then there is actually the whole line of uh, code over here. So you can just copy, there's this copy button and then you can paste this as such, right? Okay, 
So once you uh once we are done with like the basic like UI elements of this uh to do app, now we're going to put in some functionality. So the first functionality that we are going to add is we are going to add a uh, delete our to do right. So we're going to delete our to do. So if we were to focus uh on our outline button over here. We are going to add this uh, method called remove. So this uh, remove method is actually from the list object. So the list object has a remove method and it removes the first occurrence of the value from this list. So what we can do is we can add the remove to do. So inside our on pressed over here, we can add in the to do's dot remove and then we can pass in the element that we want to remove. So let's go back to our dot pad and inside our on pressed over here, let's type in to do's and then we're going to use the oops control space and then you see there is the list of different uh, methods that's inside the list. Then we're going we are going to use the remove method. So the remove method requires an object. So the object that we want to remove, luckily we are using the for in loop. We can make use of this uh, element to do. And then we can put in a semicolon. All right, let's run this. And now you could see that uh, if you were to click on done, we should expect that this learn flutter to do will be removed. Oh no, doesn't work. All right, so let's put in a print method over here. So let's see whether our to-do is actually is being updated. So I don't know why it has a script error. Okay, let's run this. And then let's click on the done. You could see that our default to-dos has, has the learn flutter uh, text, uh, sorry, learn flutter string and I create to do string. But once I click on the done, it removes the learn flutter and now the new updated string uh, list over here, it says create to do app. However, in our flutter app, it does not show. Why is that so? Oh, that rhymes. <laughs> so yeah, why does it not delete? Hmm. So we need to use this thing called set state method. So set state method, right? It notifies the framework that something in the state of an object has changed. So basically we need to rebuild our app to see the updated change. So then how do we add the set state? So the set state in its argument has an anonymous function. And then we need to add in the function inside the anonymous function of the argument. So it looks something like this basically. So we can just copy this set state over here. So just copy from six to eight. And then we're going to highlight everything over here. The to do's dot remove, not everything, sorry. You're going to highlight these two uh, lines of code, the to do's dot remove and the print to do's and paste this as such. Let's format this so it looks nicer. Now, when we press, we will actually change the state by having the, our whole app rebuild. So what do I mean by rebuild? So if you have paid attention earlier, there is this thing called the build method. So if I were to print out building, right, something like this, so it's not inside the slides, but this is just a additional information, bonus content. So if I were to run this, right, um, for Flutter, it will build this, my home page once. Is it running? Okay, it's pretty slow. Okay, why is it slow? Okay, let me copy this. Let me refresh this whole uh, website. Okay. Maybe I broke the app by putting a print statement. That cannot be true. So if I want to run this again, 
Okay, let's see. Could not resolve the flutter. Okay, let me run it again. I might have slow internet. Forgive me. The, yeah, so I'm expecting uh, for the building string to be printed out. Okay, so I think printing building is actually... Uh, what do you call this? Uh, spoiling this. Okay. All right, the more I know, I this is my first time having this error, but doesn't matter. So let's just run this app again. Okay, yeah. Apparently, I cannot put a print method under the build method. But if you were to do this inside uh, your own IDE, it actually works. But the whole point is that what I wanted to show is that now it works actually. So if I were to click on the done, right? Wait, not, not this car. Let me run this again. This should remove this. Okay, it doesn't remove at all. It's supposed to remove. Why is that so? Let me see. Why, why, why? Okay, so there is something wrong. I think it's my code over here, but what you are supposed to see is that there the learn flutter was will be removed because of the set state over here so apparently it doesn't do that for some reason that i don't understand never mind it's okay i will go use another uh let me use chrome yeah i'm, I'm not using chrome as well yeah so uh for set state over here right it actually will rebuild your whole app for you to actually see the updated uh, list of to-dos over here. So that's what I'm trying to do. But yeah, I think it might be my browser problem. I am not sure myself. So let's see if I were to run in Chrome, it will do it in a scope. Maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Wait, that, that. Yeah, I think that is why. Oh yeah, it is in the inner scope. Oh my God, that's such a beginner move. <laughs> yes, oh my God, thanks, thanks Eugene. Yes, oh my God, that's so beginner. Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Okay, anyway, thank you so much. That was just a test for you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <laughs> you're supposed to put the to-dos outside the build method. I don't know why I put in the uh, inside the build method, but yeah. Okay, so thank you, Eugene, for that. Uh, this is uh, my mistake. But yeah, so if you were to delete, uh, if you were to use set state, it actually removes and updates the app itself. Yes, that was a super beginner, but it's okay. All right, so... Once we have done that, we actually can refactor our function into a little bit less code, right? So you can actually change your method over here, the syntax into a single arrow syntax. So you have you change your curly brackets into this arrow syntax. And then this is basically like another short form for return. And then you can just put in the method over here. And I guess with that, you don't need to put in a semicolon. So if I were to just copy this, it should work as well inside our Dart pad. So inside our on press over here, highlight everything and paste this. Let's format this and run this as well. So if I were to click on done, it actually should work as expected. And then we actually can refactor it even more. So we can make this into a single line. So you could see that our on press has the, our anonymous function changed into the arrow syntax, which returns this set state uh, function. And inside the set state function, it has an anonymous function that is changed into an arrow syntax. So then I guess this is a way for you to have less code. Yeah. So. Less code means uh, clean code. Uh, I don't know. It depends, actually. 
But uh, personally, I, if you were to just have one function, then I recommend you to use the arrow syntax. So if you were to run this, and then if you were to click on done, right, it actually works. All right. So this is just like another like way for you to have, uh, yeah. Oh, nice. I did this. Yes. Now you know how to put arrows inside your Flutter project. So uh, earlier, oh, yes. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. So actually, I, yes. So the to-dos is not supposed to be inside the build method, but outside of it. So apologies on that. Um, so if you were lost, like myself, I should have just gone to the answer sheet and look at the difference. But yeah. So if you were to just copy this whole thing and paste inside your Dart pad, everything should work. All right. So last, okay, sorry. The next thing is, since we are able to delete our to-do, we are now going to add our to-dos, right? So we have a lot of things that we want to do. <laughs> so for example, learning this Flutter app, creating this uh, to-do app, and then learning our mistakes, right? So we are going to add things inside our list of to-dos. So we're going to use this add method. So the add method adds value to the end of the list, extending the length, length of the list by one. So inside our floating action button over here, we're going to use the set states as well to add our to-dos. So let's copy this on pressed method. Let's go back to our Dart pad. And then let's highlight our on pressed statement and paste this as such. So let's put a semicolon and let's format this as well. So the thing is for to do's dot add, if you were to highlight inside the documentation, it requires us to have an argument. Oh, sorry, it requires us to have a value and the value of type string. So the thing is, how are we going to get our text value from our text field? So we need to have this thing called the text editing controller. So what this text editing controller, in my words, right, it is basically a storage or an object that helps you store the text value entered inside the text field. So you could say that this text editing controller is controlling the state, the, the state of the text field. So if you were to go, if to, to create your own text editing controller, you probably have to do something like this. All right, so hopefully let's not do the same mistake, but let's put it outside the build method. All right, so let's copy this final text controller over here. And then, you probably have to create an instance of the text editing, editing controller object. And then we're going to create a variable called text controller. So in Dart, there is different types of uh, variables. So you guys have seen the typical var that represents variable. And then you have constant as well. So constant is basically imposing to a variable that it will not change in the future. And then lastly, we have this thing called final. So the difference is that final is that you will not, it will, it is immutable, something like constant over here. But for constants, it's, uh, it will compile ahead of time while final will compi compile during the build of Flutter, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so let's copy this uh, whole line of code. And then let's paste it just underneath our variables over here. Okay, so now we have our text editing controller. Now, where, how do we then pass our text controller inside our text field? So what we can do is that we can actually edit inside our text field controller parameter. So we can copy this uh, controller or we can type it out. It's pretty simple. So under our text field over here, we can type in controller and then press control space, then you see the controller parameter automatically created for us. And then we will type in the text controller um, variable. All right. So now we have passed in the text controller inside our text field. 
so that we can extract out the value from the text controller. So then how do we extract it out? So then we can actually in, uh, use the text controller inside our on press the function in our floating action button. So we can pass in the text controller dot text property. So let's copy this text controller and then inside our todos.add over here, let's put in the text controller and then you could see that there is different methods and property. We're going to use the text property. So if you highlight text over here, it is a getter method that returns a string type. And you can see that it is the, the definition of the text property is the current string the user is editing or typing. All right, so now once we are done with that, let's see if it works. So let's run this. <clears throat> and then we're going to add in our to-dos. So you can type in your new year resolution. My new year resolution is stop making beginner mistakes, right? All right, so now if you were to add this, you could see that uh, we have added our, uh, what do you call this, our to-dos successfully just at the end of our list of to-dos. I mean, yeah, it's rendered a little bit ugly due to how zoomed in is, uh, this is, but if, you were, if I were to do this, it looks nicer. Lah. All right, so um, the thing is, once we have added our to-dos, right, you could see that our text field still has our, what do you call this? to-dos that we have just typed. So I think one thing that we need to do is we need to clear this thing. So we need to use the method clear. So the I put, okay. So for example, um, oh, sorry, that is one use case. So now we are just going to add after our after we add our to do our new to do then we are going to clear our text controller so control space and then we're gonna use the clear method as such so clear the documentation for clear is um, it will empty the string and the selection will be invalid. So that means it will just not select this at all. So let's run this. So maybe we can add um, eat McSpicy. There is a McSpicy one for one in the McDonald app. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so if you were to click on this, right? Now you could see that the eat McSpicy has been added and then it cleared the text field as well. Then you can add in more to do's, for example, exercise or maybe run. Huh? You, we need to run more nowadays, right? So then at the same time, we can see that the done button is also working as according, accordingly. All right. So now there is also one case where if I were to just click on this plus button, it adds an empty to do. So this is a use case that we might overlooked. So how do we then uh, clear this? Okay, sorry. So how do we then, you know, prevent any empty to-dos? So before that, um, you guys can actually just copy and paste this whole thing as well. So that is copy thing and then paste as such. Yep. So... All right, so now we are going to warn the user for empty text field. So sometimes uh, we have bugs or things that we don't expect, so we need to fix them as developers. So once we have added our text, uh, uh, our to-dos, then we want to check. So before we add any to-do, sorry, before we add any to-dos, we need to check whether the text is empty. So what we can do is we actually can make use of this is empty um, method over here. This is a getter method, sorry. Yeah, getter method over here. And then we're going to use this if else statement. So if the text controller text is empty, then it will show a warning. Else it will add to do, add the to do. 
All right, so we can just um, copy this whole thing. Let's go back to our Dart pad. Then highlight the set state over here and paste this as such. So let's format this. So for Flutter, we have a convenient uh, getter method that is called is empty, which returns a boolean if the string is empty. So it returns true if the boolean if the string is empty. So this is an efficient way or easy way for us to know whether our text field over here is empty. So we're gonna show a warning. All right. Um, so let's see if it works. All right. So if you were to press add, oh sorry, I need to run this. So if you were to press this plus button no to-dos or no new to-dos with empty strings is added. So if, were, if I were to add in, uh, for example, eat healthy to-do, and if I were to press the add, then it actually works, all right? So now we are going to show a warning. So how are we going to show a warning? So there are many ways to show warnings, but I think uh, this is a, since this is just exposing you to many widgets, I'm going to show you on how to show this thing called a dialog. So if there is an empty text, then we will show a dialog to say that please enter some text with a very cute little face, all right? So we're gonna use this function called show dialog. So this function just shows a modal window. So in, yeah, it's a window that just covers your screen with a darkened background so that you only can focus on that specific uh, window that you're supposed to focus on. Yep, too much explanation. All right, so this is like a function that's available inside the material library. So we're gonna use the show dialog function. And then for our show dialog function, it requires a parameter called context. So since the show dialog requires a context, this context actually refers to the build context, which is actually, which we can get from the build context from our build method over here. So let's copy the word context and then we paste it as such. So why does it need context? So basically this show dialog wants to know what to cover, right? Because if you were to see over here, it needs to know which page it's in, and then it will cover with a darkened background with the dialog popping up as such. And now with this show dialog, we also need to know what kind of dialog we are going to show. So we are to, to build our dialog, we are going to use this parameter called builder. So this builder over here in the documentation, it requires a function which has the build context inside it and it returns a widget. So this is a little bit complicated to understand. So what it basically needs is that it needs an anonymous function that returns a widget. All right, so let's, oh, I forgot the context here as well. All right, my bad. So we can just put in the brackets with the word context, and then we're going to put the curly brackets here. And then we are we need to return a widget type. So in Flutter, there's a lot of widget, uh, there's a lot of dialogues, right? So there's like alert dialogue, there is like simple dialogue, but we're gonna use the alert dialogue. So the alert dialog informs the user about a situation that requires acknowledgement. Okay, it doesn't really require any acknowledgement, but it just, it's just a nice widget for me to have uh, spacing, basically. I chose alert dialog because it just gives me spacing around the text widget over here. So we are going to return an alert dialog. So you can type in alert by and then control space and it will just automatically uh, shows the alert dialog as well. Then for the alert dialog, we are going to make use of the parameter. So there's a lot of parameter, but we're going to just make use of the title parameter. So the title parameter requires, if you see the documentation, requires a widget. So typically a text widget. So we're gonna 
pass in a text widget. And for the string itself, we are going to add in the string, please enter some text. So let's type in the string, please enter some text, right? And then you can add in your emojis as such. So I think emojis doesn't work in Dartpad for some reason. So, yep. Now, if you were to run this, Okay, so if you were to have an uh, empty text over here, you could see that the dialogue over here has been shown as such. Yeah, so now you know a simple way for you to understand how to show a dialogue with using a simple alert dialogue. I mean, there is more parameters that you can add in as well. All right, so that's what we have added in inside our alert dialog with the text title over here. So yeah, I think we have reached to the end of this uh, workshop. I think I'm pretty fast. Yeah, it's like one hour, 25 minutes. So it, it's supposed to be two hours, 30 minutes, but yeah. So uh, yeah, so this is basically what you can do with Flutter. And uh, if you guys have known Dartpad itself, um, it's rendering this thing in Flutter. So this is its own like HTML, CSS stuff. But over here is a Flutter um, widget or Flutter. You can basically put in Flutter as, uh, as a, I think it's a, what do you call that? iframe, right? So this is an iframe of the Flutter app that you can input. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Yes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, if you have, and so I have the full source code for this whole thing. It basically will redirect you to a dot pad with all of the different, uh, if I were to click on this, it will redirect you to all of the, uh, of the code that is, uh, that I've already created for you guys. So, yeah. I think that's about it for this workshop. So you guys can ask me anything about Flutter and whatnot. Yes. Sorry if I'm too fast. <laughs> oh. Yes, it's okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much, Harris, for bringing the workshop for the Flutter workshop. It was, yeah, it was all very interesting. Yeah, for the, from the participants of the workshop, any questions? So, anyone want to ask? So I think so, sorry, sorry, Amelia, but you DM me, right? Uh, she she direct messaged me if refactoring with arrow syntax makes the code faster. Uh, not really. So it is just uh, it is just like uh, synthetic sugar for function to look nicer in a single line of code. Yeah. So it doesn't really uh make the code faster. Yeah. So Harry, actually I have a question to ask you. I think for a lot of the participants here who are new to like a mobile development, they'll probably be quite lost uh, along um, like um, amidst all the technologies out there that they can start with. Uh. So I want to ask you, so like, uh, what are your thoughts on like, uh, you know, whether they should do like Swift or like uh, use Android Studio versus like the cross-platform frameworks and amongst the cross-platform Frameworks, why do you think that people should start with uh, Flutter over React Native? Right, so that's a very good question. Like why why Flutter over um, Native or why Flutter over like uh, React Native or whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say like it really depends. So for example, like if you have a, a React um, website or a React uh, web app, and then you want it to make it into an app, right? Then I will recommend you to have a React Native app because uh, it will help you in terms of like uh, coding or just focusing on a single language rather than you know having multiple languages. Um, if you were to want to concentrate on the native platforms, that's fine as well. Um, like uh, Swift and Android or even Kotlin now, 
um, they have many uh, features uh, that uh, Flutter might not have. Like maybe you want to talk really natively to the platform, then I think Swift and Native will be better. But in terms of like um, productivity and I guess if you want to have just one code base that can build in iOS and Android because Flutter is compiled natively as well, um, yeah, uh, you can you can learn Flutter to you know go through uh, building multiple uh, platform the uh, apps you know because sometimes uh, for example if you were to have an Android app in Java and then you don't want to learn Swift so the next best thing is to build a Flutter app uh, in Dart because Java and Dart is very similar. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you can build an iOS app with Flutter. That's what some people do because they don't want to learn Swift because it's a whole new paradigm. You don't have to learn how it works. And I think a lot of people don't like Xcode. <laughs> so Flutter is like the be the next best thing. So Swift, um, if you, because I've, I, I haven't dabbled Swift a lot. I've done only like very little Swift coding, not even building an, an app. It's just a lot of like, uh, like logical coding because uh, back then I was trying to do a custom iCalendar function because Flutter can talk to Swift using, I think it's called method channel. So it's just a bridge between Flutter and the native platform. So for me, I was just playing, uh, playing around or actually it was during uh, my previous employment uh, with Swift. And for me, Swift is such a Oh no, it, it wasn't Swift, sorry, I apologize. It was Objective-C. It was such a hard language for me to understand. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, Swift, I think is better, but uh, you can also go build an Android app in Flutter if you think Java is hard for you or whatnot. Uh, yeah, so it really depends on what you, you really want uh, because nowadays, like, now there is like Swift UI, so I guess it's a better, like, front end for... Uh, iOS apps and now like uh, iOS is getting more popular because uh, of the M1 chip where you can run everything inside the M1 chip like any Apple uh, apps like your games and whatnot so it really depends on what you want for me why why I chose Flutter it's because like first of all it's very good if you were to like start your own thing like your side hustle where you're trying to build an app for two platforms right so Flutter is like a great way but if you like like for example, there, there are apps that only builds on iOS and are, are doing great because uh, they know that iOS people tend to have more uh, monetary power, meaning that they, uh, iOS pe people who have iPhones tend to spend more. So sometimes pe developers go to iOS more, but for Android, uh, it's more towards like, uh, you can build anything and everything, not anything, everything, but like, uh, in terms of deploying into Android, it's much simpler and it's easier as well. So it really depends on what you are trying to achieve. But uh, if you really don't know what you want to do, then um, just go what you think is uh, the next best thing. Oh, yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah. I think there's a few questions in the chat from Eugene and Amelia. So uh, just I, I'll just read it off. So for first, Eugene Tan, could you explain what does context in show dialogue do again? So um, so for the con, let me see where's my dot pad. Okay, so for show dialogue over here, right? Uh, basically, it's passing the context over here under the build method because for show dialogue, it's just a basic function and it wants to just show the alert dialogue as such because the widget over here requires the context to be built if you understand yeah so this context over here is just passing the context in the builder uh, parameter yeah so like uh like i said earlier it covers the background and shows the alert dialogue right that's what the this show dialogue is doing as well so context is a little bit more complicated than uh, saying that it's a location of the widget, it also does a lot more things. Uh. Yeah. So, I mean, if I were to, for example, let me go to the documentation and type in build context, right? So, build context, uh, handle the location of the widget in the widget tree 
And then it also presents a lot of methods that you can use in the stateless widget as well. So uh, I will recommend you to read it at your own time because I will, because first of all, I'm not like very uh, uh, well-versed in the build context over here, but I roughly know what the context does. So other than having the location of your widget, it helps you to pass down values along the widget tree as well. Yeah, so um, I will recommend you to read the documentation. I think, um, yeah, it, you can like, for example, pass down themes as well. So you can use like theme of context. Let me zoom in for you guys. So it can pass down themes as well so that it will just check uh, the nearest theme of uh, instance. For example, uh, the nearest theme instance for this context, if you were to go down the code, right, is this material app theme over here. Yeah, so context helps us do that. It's like a bridge towards the different data, uh, for example, theme data that you want. Yeah, hopefully that answers that yeah so for show dialogue over here right uh basically i think what it does is that it wants to know what's the for example the uh theme uh text uh style for the for the text widget over here yeah all right so uh next question amelia what is the state my home page state thing all right so that's a good question state over here so this state um, is a class that controls the inter internal state of the, the widget over here. So without these states, right, you will not be able to use this, uh, where is this thing, set state over here. Let me, where's the set state here? Ah, yeah, so this set state over here. So this state uh, object that we are extending or inheriting, right, is actually giving us uh, the functionality of updating or rebuilding the widget over here. Yeah. So because of Flutter, right? I mean, it, why why Flutter? It's fast, not only in terms of creating code or in uh not in creating code, but in terms of animations, right? It is like also as fast as native because it's trying to be as efficient as possible. So what I mean by that is that its build method will be uh, will be called only if you were to change its state. So that's why um, if you were to rebuild uh, using set state over here, right, then all of the widgets under here, right, will all get rebuilt. And it is quick enough so that it doesn't like makes your Flutter app very janky. So uh, this state will actually, uh, what do you call that, expose this set state method in order for you to update the UI or the state of your app, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So let me go to the next question. Does Flutter support SVG use? Um, support as yes, it does support SVG. So there is this thing called, let me go, I think it's called Painter or Custom Painter, if I'm not wrong. So Custom Painter, uh, so think of, so a, a little bit of background for Flutter is that Flutter is being built in this engine called Skia. So Skia is a rendering engine that's also built by Google. And... Um, let me zoom in for you guys. So it is a 2D graphics library that is uh, used for Google Chrome, Chrome OS, Android, and oh, did you never see? Oh yeah, there is Flutter as well and Mozilla Firefox. So think of like uh, Flutter as an empty canvas. So it's like an empty white paper. So using like custom paint, right? You are able to draw. So SVG, right, is basically just like instructions for you to draw. So using custom paint, you can technically convert the SVG into custom paint instructions. So I think there is like Flutter SVG. I did a video about it as well. So there is a, using SVG in Flutter, there is a Medium article about it. Yeah. So you can use the Flutter SVG package uh, in order for you to, you know, create uh, very nice graphics using SVG. 
So I think it, it is also in terms of like uh, performance, right? SVG images are very performant. They are very small because they are like instructions to draw. That's about it. So yeah, uh, it does support SVG. All right. So uh, hi, how does Flutter link to backend such as SQL Lite? How does, oh, I don't know what's a how, uh, but <laughs> I don't know how uh, you have to ask the package manager. So Flutter has... Um, SQL Lite, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, SQL F Lite or SQL Lite? Yeah, they have packages that allows you to um, build uh, databases for you guys. So uh, I think earlier I mentioned uh, like this thing called like uh, method channels or platform channels. So these are uh, what do you call that features in Flutter that allows you to talk to your native code. So um, writing custom platform specific code, right? So you could see that there is like a architectural overview of your Flutter app over here. So you could see that there is two different types. Uh, there is this thing called method channel. And then this is like your Flutter app, which is the front face of the app. And then you have your iOS host and your Android host. So if you guys are iOS uh, developer or Android developer, you probably know what app delegate and activity is, right? So I'm not very well-versed in iOS or Android, uh, but this is how they talk to the different platforms. And then um, you are able to, you know, like for example, code certain things inside the iOS and then use method channel to talk. Uh, and then um, if you want to have data type support, uh, Dart, they have also list out a bunch of stuff to talk in between the different platform channels. But to answer the SQL fly, I am not sure. But you can ask this person uh, who created the SQL fly uh, stuff. Yeah. So Christopher, yes. Uh, yeah, Firebase. Yeah, Firebase integrates very, very well. Yes, I also will recommend Firebase uh, to for, for your use of your database because um, it has everything and um, now it has its own package. It's called Flutter Fire, if I'm not wrong. So now there is an external uh, uh, company that actually... Uh, what do you call it, handles with the Firebase plugins for Flutter. So you could see what kind of plugins in Firebase that it supports. So you have mobile, web, and Mac OS, right? So for, for the database uh, for Firestore, you can now use it for mobile, web, and even uh, Mac OS uh, apps. Yeah, so yeah, I also will recommend Firestore. Okay, so Steven, just in case anyone hasn't learned about generic for state, Inside the angle brackets is something related to the concept generics. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm not well versed in generics also. Yeah, but yeah. So tutorial, generic, yes. What IDE would you recommend if you uh, if you want to code on my computer offline? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I've never coded uh, my code on, on offline before. Uh, but for me, I mean, I have tried using Android Studio and I've tried using VS Code. So personally, I like using VS Code is because it's simple enough. Android Studio has a lot of features that you can do, but for me, I don't need a lot of features. So I will, I will actually go for uh, VS Code and then you can uh, try uh, Android Studio as well. So generics, um, I wanna look what generics are as well. Maybe I know, but it's just that maybe I don't know. Okay. Right, so it's types. Right, okay, yeah, generics. Yes, thank you, Stephen, for pointing it out. Yeah. So, any more questions? Oh, yeah, I actually also have a question. Yes. Uh, Harris, yeah. So, uh, you mentioned before that Flutter is a cross platform framework, right? Uh, how do you think is about like using Flutter, let's say, aside from like iOS and uh, Android, uh, but also like to build a website? Because like if I remember correctly, the last time I checked, it was still in alpha or beta. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so for website development in Flutter, it's still in beta. Uh, but I would say that 
uh, to build a website in Flutter, I think it's a little bit more, I guess, um, intuitive uh, because like, uh, just this is just my personal take on it because if I were to build a website in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right, you have to learn like three things. So you have to learn HTML, you have to learn CSS, and then you have to learn JavaScript. Uh, and then for Flutter, you only have to learn Dart. So Dart handles with your HTML, your CSS, and JavaScript. Basically, the backbone, the, the UI, and the logic as well. So I think a lot of people in the Flutter community is looking forward for Flutter web to be stable because it's like super intuitive that to create a website, you can just build it in Flutter. And I think a lot of people are so used to Flutter that they don't want to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yeah. So uh, Flutter web also, I, I would say personally, it's also, I would say, an extension to a Flutter app that you have built. So uh, it, I would say that um, Flutter, if you have a Flutter app and then you want to make the Flutter app uh, mobile, right, uh, into a Flutter web app in a mobile view, then I will highly recommend it. Uh, if you want to build a static page in Flutter, then I would not recommend it because Flutter, why it's good is because of its engine. And the Flutter engine or the rendering engine, right, is actually pretty heavy. So if I'm not wrong, uh, in the Flutter web, it's like two megabytes, which is quite a lot for an engine. I think React or uh, Vue, it's smaller. So that's why um, I would not recommend you to build static pages, like for example, landing page or even your portfolio in Flutter web. But if you want to create like interactive apps, like for example, like very uh, nice games or like, uh, I don't know, quizzes or something interactive, right? Then I think Flutter Web will be great. So uh, I think that's where Flutter Web is more, I would say, uh, better at rather than static uh, pages. So uh, it's still in beta. I would still not recommend you to build anything in production in Flutter Web until it becomes stable because, uh, yeah. But this is how the underlying technologies of how uh, Flutter does it. So it has uh, the it uses Canvas element. It uses the JS engine. The I think it's Flutter min dot JS or something like that. And then use DOM uh, DOM as well. Yeah. And Flutter web also has a built-in progressive web app. So if you were to build a Flutter web application, it's also PWA. Uh, it's already PWA supported as well. So. If you were to push out in uh, the website, uh, you can uh, download it as a PWA in your phone as well. So I think that's that's a good uh, feature that Flutter has brought in. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the answer. Yeah, it's no very problem. clear. Right. Anyone else has any pro uh, has any question? Any problems also can, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any question? <laughs> Otherwise, actually, I want to ask another question. Sure, sure, what sure, do you no think problem. about? <laughs> what do you think actually about like the maturity of the Flutter libraries? Because I think like mm. uh like the community stuff. Because I know that it's widely. I mean, it's definitely supported by Google. But yeah. how about like outside Google and perhaps like the libraries, the community, and like uh, previously you mentioned as well about like using platform channel to use like the. Swift uh, library, right? Do you, uh, do you think like many of like the implementation with Flutter right now still often like people need to use platform channel to connect with like a uh, native library instead of those that are already like written in Flutter? Yeah, that's a very good uh, concern and question as well. So it also has been brought up in the Flutter community that the packages out there are uh, not as uh, supportive as the other, you know, like uh, communities, like for example, Android, Swift, or even like React Native, right? Because uh, a lot of these communities are already quite mature. So I would say Flutter community is not mature yet because, of, because a lot of packages are still like not, uh, I would say, well maintained because sometimes people will just build a package or a library and then they will just leave it. So you could see that they have last uh, updated maybe what, six months ago or seven months ago. So like people 
might still be wondering whether the package is still being supported. So there's a lot of these kind of like, uh, not say a lot, but like there is this kind of problems in the Flutter community. So even though Flutter is being backed by Google and there is engineers working on it, there are certain like uh, priorities that this uh, Flutter team is trying to, you know, uh, make it. So packages, uh, they are trying to, make it so now uh, dart the programming language under flutter has this new feature called null feature uh, sorry null safety feature so now 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 you have to make your packages null safety so now you could see the different packages being migrated into the null safety feature so null safety in essence is basically helping your code to be even more strict saying that once you create a variable you can either put it nullable or non-nullable so that uh, because it's a big problem, including myself uh, when we are creating Flutter apps because uh, Flutter was non-nullable, sorry, Flutter is nullable. Uh, I mean, Dart is nullable. Um, so that means there is a chance where you can get a value that is null. And once you get a value that is null, Flutter will just shout a red screen. That means uh, error. So sometimes uh, users in the production app, right, they will see a red screen. So it's very bad user experience. So with this nullable or null safety uh, feature, it will actually help. So a lot of uh, well-maintained packages have already adopted the null safety uh, feature, but a lot of the needed but not uh, commonly maintained, not commonly, not, uh, not oftenly maintained packages have not, uh, migrated so we can really see the 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 problem of or the lack of i would say commitment towards the packages and it's no fault of them because nobody is paying them or uh, on on maintaining packages it's just that is is it's just how young flutter is and flutter in terms of being stable 1.0 to now i think it's only like maybe two years and two years in tech it's still pretty young, I feel, because I think if I were to compare with React or even like Angular, uh, it's still pretty, it's it's still pretty um young in 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 that aspect. So um yeah, uh, and some packages that a lot of uh, uh not say a lot, some packages that some Flutter developers requires are very niche. So like very not a lot of developers are looking into that, and sometimes they do. Uh, brought up inside the community saying that, oh, why is this package not being maintained and such? So uh, it's still in the works and we are trying our best to, to have these uh, packages maintained, but uh, it's still an ongoing process as well. Yeah. Ah, I see. Yeah. Thanks for your answer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyone else has any question? looks like not okay cool yeah if not then i think we'll just uh close the workshop yeah maybe yeah thanks uh again oh yeah uh thanks a lot harris for bringing the workshop today yeah it's very amazing it's very interesting like bring a lot of insight and yeah hope that uh everyone will attend the workshop i think some of them already left as well <laughs> the zoom call yeah hope no uh, do, uh those of you who are still here uh, you all still, uh, you all enjoyed the workshop and yeah, maybe I want, uh, are you, do you still have any more slides? Otherwise I want to share. Okay. My so, uh, before I, uh, proceed, uh, then, okay. uh, I just want to share if you guys are interested, I have some free courses that you guys can learn. So I have a Udemy, mm -hmm. uh, free Udemy course on learning Dart. So it's called beginner course on programming and coding, coding fundamentals. And then if you want to learn more about Flutter Web, uh, which we have discussed earlier, um, I actually have a free one hour uh, YouTube tutorial on how to create your own Flutter Web uh, project with Firebase, which is a service that, uh, one of its services is Firestore, which is a database. So everything from downloading uh, Flutter and Firebase is inside the one hour uh, tutorial. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass the time to Stephen. So let me unshare. Is that, yeah. Yep, okay. Sure. All right. Share my screen again. Yeah, actually it's just like a short. Yeah. Yeah. So can you see my screen? 
yeah okay yeah so yeah again thanks everyone uh, for coming yeah just one last thing maybe yeah we are we are definitely will be happy to get your feedback about like how was the workshop going and what kind of workshop topics do you want us to have next maybe for like our other events uh, by NUS hackers like hacker school friday hacks or like perhaps like for the next year hack and roll maybe like suggestion for like the topics that we could bring we'll be happy to uh, get to know like what kind of topics would, uh, would you like to learn and yeah definitely yeah feel free to scan the qr code below uh, here in the slides not below uh, feel free to share, uh, scan the qr code and then like type in your feedback yeah and again thanks thanks a lot for coming for the workshop and yeah that's all that we have for today and again thank you Haris for uh, for like preparing all of this despite like just celebrating like the new year <laughs> All right, thank you. See you guys. Hope you guys have a nice hackathon. Bye-bye. Yep, bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.